Welcome to the Rundown with tonight's guest from recording artist Jesse Ginger, Denim Party, Architect of Madness, M.F.O.D. Your host, Model Rosales. Hello and welcome to The Rundown, the show where we keep you informed of what's hip, what's happening, and what's going on in today's industry. The focus of tonight's show is music. With us in the studio, we have two different guests from two different rock bands, and we'll be discussing what the life of a rocker and a rock star truly is. Before we begin the show, let's take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stick around. Our guest, I just want to tell you about him. His name is MFOD. He's the man behind the music, the brain behind the operations of a band called Architects of Madness. Please welcome LA's experimental band, Architects of Madness. Here's MFOD. How are you, sir? Hey, what's up? All right. <laughs> just got a few questions to ask you here. Yep. We're talking about rock music. Mm -hmm. What kind of music uh, does Architects of Madness play? Uh, not necessarily rock. It's got an edge to it, but uh, it's experimental, experimental. Av avant-garde. Uh, um, yeah, I guess that would be just about the... If you were to sit there and uh, give me an idea of what experimental, a combination of different genres of music, um, which two genres of music would it be? Uh, well, I don't like to label. I think a lot of people label music too much label. these days. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say experimental, because it's like, it's not what you hear on Top 40 radio. It's not what you hear, you know. It's the Architects, it would be, I'd say, roughly I'd, about seven years, seven, years. seven, eight years, something like that. Um, one other question I have to ask you, because, you know, what we're going to do is open up, you know, field reporters mm -hmm. and give us questions. Sure, uh, cool. But who came up with the name Architects of Madness? Uh, it came off because originally we were uh, a rap group, and it was the Three Shades of Madness, and it was three members. And uh, from that, it went to the Architects of Madness because of the change in the music that we were playing. It wasn't rap, well, even our rap was experimental as far as that goes, but mm -hmm. it changed one day when I was at a record store and I happened to see uh, some DVDs on sale, The Outer Limits. And uh, one of the program's name was The Architects of Fear. Mm -hmm. So I took the fear off and left the madness from the three shades in. Wow. Henceforth, there you go. That is creative indeed. Now, <laughs> let's go to the uh, segment out there. You know, we have a reporter, our field reporter. Right Her on. name is Lola Lopez. She has a few questions that a few people in Santa Monica College are asking. Okay. Lola? Thanks, Mauro. We are here in Santa Monica College to find out what question could a student ask a rock star. Let's find out. What question could you ask a rock star? Well, the first thing I would ask a rock star is what are their influences in their music? I tend to find a lot of musicians nowadays, especially rock stars, go back to classic rock and blues and jazz and are in the process of trying to formulate their own unique sound. That would be one of the first questions I would ask. Second of all, I would ask them what sort of guitar gear and effects they would use because sometimes it's a very unique sound and everyone always wonders how on earth do they make that? Is it a combination of technique or is it a combination of equipment? Frank Zappa, uh, Jimi Hendrix, and I, you know it's hard to leave a lot out, but I'd say the first four would be the Sun Ra and uh, Carl Heinz Stockhausen. Sun Ra? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Mm -hmm. Now we have another question. Let's see here. We'll ask a how their rock music is different from other rock bands that are playing right now? I don't believe in categorizing music as far as that goes, but I just, we don't sound like anything else that's out there because it's, it's experimental. experimental. Well, I mean, there's other experimental bands that may sound uh, similar, but, you know, we're just a big eclectic, a big uh, hodgepodge of, of everything. Hodgepodge? Yeah. I haven't heard that word in quite a while now. <laughs> Does it exist or are you just making it up? No, I'm not making it up. I heard it somewhere. <laughs> I know, I'm just playing with you. Now, the next question is prior to being a guitarist, what have you done before? Well, the, other than being not just a guitarist, right, right. doing the whole musical aspect of the group mm -hmm. and production wise, uh, originally started in the 80s as a disc jockey mm -hmm. here in uh, Southern California, the West Coast. Disc jockey. Well, yeah. Oh, well, DJ. Oh, that's interesting. You know, doing house parties and uh, playing clubs. So, what made you change from spinning vinyl to you know playing guitar and you know doing well, experimental always, rock music I, I always played guitar in the in the back you know like hiding, mm -hmm. hiding? <laughs> yeah because it wasn't that good it <laughs> still really isn't all that good but um hmm. i just got tired of uh, the same old stuff right. everything like i was talking about earlier the top 40 everybody's got to sound a, a certain way to be something right, right. 
and just always been in the left field. You're never, you know, gonna create some commercial potential songs or. Uh, unless, yeah, yeah. Unless like I have no other other means of, of eating or anything like that. <laughs> wow. If it pertains to having, you know, food. So you're part of the starving <laughs> musicians. Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. But you have to keep it real. That's that's the true thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the way I think. Where do you want Architects of Madness to be within the next five years? A uh, bigger group, because at the moment there's only three members. Three members. You know, who, it's who a trio. Uh, Mr. Malvado is lead vocals, mm -hmm. writer. Uh, myself, I do drum machines, keyboards, guitar, and bass. And then I have another bassist, uh, Louis Tress, who plays bass. Who is a writer for your band? The majority of the writing is done by Malvado. And you do, of course. Oh, once in a blue moon, how, you know, I'll write something. How do you come up with the uh, songs, or, or how, how does you know the whole feeling? Come together? Something that I don't know. You have a bad day. You have uh, family problems. You have trouble at work, or just your overall uh, um, aspect of life. What Look out on outlook of life. Right? Outlook on life. Like, yeah. what are your uh, motivation to write songs, or what are your basically the themes that the songs are all about as you go along in your music? Um. That's a good question. I know you said, you know, bad day and everything. Yeah, like well, I mean, you know, you, you have uh, uh, things that you go through in life. Um, I don't know. Um, you, Malvado is the one that, that writes more, so, so he would probably be able to elaborate a lot more. How does the process usually work? Um, I make an instrumental. Originally, just like when we were doing the rap stuff, I was making an instrumental or, or a riff or something, give it to, show it to people, and then they would write something. Or it, it, it's a free-for-all. Um, <laughs> in the garage, you know, playing music and just throwing ideas at each other, mm -hmm. basically. Exactly. It's not no real one set form of uh, um, uh, recipe of how to make right. a song or whatever. That you mean you don't follow a pattern in regards to some guy with a bug in his ear telling you, oh, you got to sound like this. And uh, no, that's why I'm starving. <laughs> well, I mean, again, the whole concept of being original and being true, that's, that's always been a good one. Isn't yeah, it? but it don't put you know, food on the table sometimes, but you do it, you suffer for your art, as mm, they say. Where can we go as far as finding, you know, music from architecture? Uh, I mean, where do you play? There you go, that's a good uh, question to ask here. At the moment, just wherever they can, you know, wherever we get to play, where they'll accept our music, right, right, which right. Is, is here and there. We play coffee houses mainly right, right now. Do you uh, primarily focus on, on just experimental and uh, electronic, or do you focus we on... We do acoustic, acoustic, we do uh, electronic, and of course uh, the electric aspect, right. as I say, electronic is mm -hmm. keyboards, drum machine, and then we also do the guitar bass okay. kind of deal. And, w you know, why haven't you guys haven't, have, haven't you guys found any more, uh, uh, you know, musicians to join your band? I've gone on Craigslist, I've gone to people in general, up, you know, up front with them, and it just, I don't know. I don't know if it's where, um, too scary for him? <laughs> scary? Uh, yeah, I guess, because I don't get too many comments. But there's a few people that we're talking to right uh, now in the right. mix. Or, but um, I guess the outlook or the, the set mindset that we have at the moment, nobody else is on that air. We're on different kind of uh, oxygen, maybe. Right. You know, I don't know. So you guys are weird, experimental. Oh, yeah, definitely. What's your website, you know, to go uh, to You can, the right. biggest, the best, and, and everybody knows, everybody goes to MySpace. MySpace. So, yeah, so you go to MySpace, you can go to MySpace, uh, MFOD. Uh -huh. Or you go to uh, MySpace Architects of Madness. So it's it's MySpace slash Architects, slash Architects, of, Architects of Madness. Yeah. MySpace slash MFOD. Exactly. And, uh, I think pretty much everybody's uh, I, I think computer savvy already. I, I'd imagine. Maybe I read I'm it. It's Manny's Lab. That's pretty interesting. It's Manny's Lab or MFOD. Yeah, cool. I think one of the um, two. What advice do you have for upcoming artists that uh, you know are out there struggling and, and trying to make a name for themselves? I can be like everybody else and say, be true to your art but it doesn't pay the bills, but if that's, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but I mean, if that's the way you want, be just be, you know, just do what you want to do. At the, at the bottom line, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if you don't get paid or you don't, where you get exposure, play what you feel. Right. Don't try to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Be different. Right. But people sometimes, like I said, don't accept that. But have fun. That's all you, right. in the bottom line, just have fun doing what you're doing. And, and you have fun. I'm, on I'm having a lot of fun good, doing good. what I'm doing. The whole band's having fun. Uh, I couldn't speak for everybody, but I can speak for myself. But yeah. how could you say you're having fun when the songs are about depression and, and uh, you know, because I, 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 you make light, of, I make light of it. Oh, good. It's just making light of it. Uh, that's what I think everybody should do and it'd be a better place to live in this world. Right. You know, so. Well, thanks for coming to the show. The very talented MFOD.
We'll be right back a little later. Or actually, he'll be right back a little later to perform a song off of the album TV Dinner with lead singer Mr. Malvado. Now, stick around as we go to another break. Adam Harding of South Africa's successful band called Just Ginger. Welcome to the show. Thanks. How good to be here. So, tell me a little bit about Just Ginger before we, ask, you know, before we begin the interview officially. Right. Um, we formed in 96. Um, since then, uh, the band has pretty much sold the most amount of records that any rock band in our, in our country has ever sold. Oh, wow. um, we've toured with U2 and uh, Def Leppard and Stevie Wonder and you name it. Um, yeah, I read that. that that's pretty, pretty... Wow. Yeah. I mean, for a band that just formed and automatically gets picked up like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, it, it's a, a, it's a timing thing, like all business, right, you know, right. it's a, who knows, we, the band formed not, not having uh, delusions of grandeur, uh -huh. but it just somehow happened and we're very fortunate and um, we just got signed in the States and so hoping to, um, uh, how can I say, uh, replicate wow. some of that here. So I I in a way it's kind of like the British invasion kind of, but it's the South African <laughs> the invasion. South African invasion. Maybe, you know, a yeah. little segment of it could yeah. say that, you know. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's a South African invasion. <laughs> it's more of a South, South African, South African, South African yeah. partaking. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I, I think, you know, my, my generation, South Africa's got a, a dark past, and, mm -hmm. but it's also got a, a colorful past, and it's, you know, it's, it's got a very bright future. And I'm just glad that, you know, in all areas, you know, Charlize Theron and... Uh, uh, we w last year, South Africa won the best foreign film at the Oscars oh, and wow. with Futsotsi. And so, you know, there's just a bunch of us out there uh, raising awareness and sort of, you know, bringing, um, ushering in a new era for the country and for the arts. And what's, uh, what's the influence of your guys' music? Um, it's varied. Um, I, I can't really say. I, individually, we have such a varied taste. I must have close on 3,000 albums on my iPod, so, uh, oh, you know, okay. I can't really, it, you right. know, it, it, it varies. Very we don't always sound like what we're influenced by. Right, right, right. You know, you can be influenced by things outside of music as well, so, um, uh, but mainly, I guess, um, just instrument-based music, right. you know. What do you do f in the band? In the band, I play bass, mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, we're all we're all sort of chameleons right. musically. I play a bunch of instruments, mm -hmm. uh, studied, uh, got a, a degree in percussion and drumming. Um, you know, uh, we, we all play drums mm -hmm. being from South Africa. You grew up, you know, right. with a lot of rhythm around you and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, kind of like the Brazilians almost. Right, right. So, uh, yeah. What uh, inspired you personally to become a musician? Um, just from a very young age, I was just, I just had, had it. I just had. Um, I was on TV when I was three years old, performing in a national talent contest. Uh, my parents are both professional musicians, so kind of born into it, sort of, um, mm -hmm. but by no means pushed into it. Right. You know, course. my my, you know, my mom was always like, uh, oh. become a doctor, or become right, a lawyer, right. or something. But uh, I just wasn't good at anything else. You right, know. Right. Of course. So sometimes it's 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 you know the whole artist concept is you just grow up with it and there's nothing else you can do like you said I mean, yeah you know, they, they push you to be one thing but it's always what they don't want you to be that's, that's what tends to happen yeah aspect. it's sad when people get into music for the wrong reasons you know guys who yeah money yeah. fame all that nonsense it's nice know. but mm. how true are you you know well kind of sort of in a way you know yeah right? i don't know <laughs> it's a it's a it's a uh, a fickle beast right. the whole celebrity thing yeah it's now, since this is a cable access television show, we have some questions from the general public out there. So we're going to go back to Lola, our reporter, Lola Lopez, and she's going to give us the questions, and then I'll take, tell them to you as we go along. All right. Mm -hmm. um, what would you be doing now if you weren't a rock star? Uh, <laughs> I, I actually don't know. I think every musician, especially living in Los Angeles, gets that, you know, late at night staring at the ceiling, like, what's my life becoming? What am right. I going to do? Mm -hmm. um, none of us have ever had day jobs. We've been very fortunate that, you know, our, our uh, music has always just provided for us. Um, I, 
I don't know. I, I, I would always find a way to, to, to be involved in music, if, whether it means I got to go and play on a cruise ship <laughs> to pensioners right. playing uh, bossa novas and uh, girl from Ipanema. I, I'll do it. You know. Could you, uh, you know, just as a demonstration in case that happens, sing <laughs> a little bit of a Love Boat soundtrack. You know? Yeah, I need. Uh, I don't know. I probably need uh, diapers and a cocktail umbrella in my ear or something. I don't know. Now the next question um, w that I have here is: uh, Every musician has you know, pain that inspires them to sing a certain song. Mm. What's Just Ginger's certain song based on pain or we hardship? You know, we have a lot. Uh, we, write, we write from life experience, but um, we make a sort of a point of not explaining too much because then it, it, it becomes yours as opposed to something that someone can make their own. You know, music it's got to be a personal thing, you know, if that's why, you know, things like music videos, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a touchy thing because, w you know, when, when someone listens to music, it inspires or it evokes a certain emotion or a certain picture in their mind and songs w about hardship and hard times and, you know, despair, it's, it's a personal thing. So, you know, I, we don't really publicize where it comes from you know it's, it's it's more of a feeling it's more of a vibe uh, an emotion that gets put out there and then becomes it's no longer ours anymore you know it's, it's always your baby and your songs are your songs and right, right, right. Um, it's your art but um, you have to let go and sort of let it become someone else's that's what having fans are all about it's it's people who've taken what you've given them and somehow digested it and made it their own and made it a part of their lives and right. so well for us at least it's it's the, you, you don't get none of that weird creepy like oh my god you know that song is about me and from fans and stuff like that oh yeah you get it <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow you know I, I read about it from John Lennon from other groups you know that they're like yeah you know were well, you thinking about me when you wrote that song and Lennon has how many how many of you ha have you gotten you know wh where they get the words and they play with the well words and we translate we it to we've had I mean our music <laughs> is a lot more positive than <laughs> doom and gloom right um, but uh, a lot of people you know on the flip side of that you know we've had people that come up to us and, and have had some really hard times and they're like, um, you know, such and such a song saved my life, which is like, it, uh, there's just nothing you can, that can prepare you for that. You know, mm -hmm. like, you can be blasé about it and you can be like all, yeah, well, you know, yeah, it's deserved or it's this or it's that, you know. Every musician has a, has a raging ego you know with, within them some people portray it some people don't but you have to have a certain sense of confidence and a certain sense of self um, worth to do what we do because you go out there every night on stage and you open yourself up right. to everyone's opinions so you got to have a certain sense of you can be humble about it but you have to have a certain sense of like I'm worthy of doing this you know I've, I've got something to give mm -hmm. and so when people come up to you and they say what you've created like changed their life or mm -hmm. saved their life it's like it's a big deal Wow. You know? That, I mean, that's, to that us. sounds very inspiring. But unfortunately, we have run out of time. Wow. Or fortunately. You, anyway, because <laughs> no, you're not on the spot anymore. Right. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, the great Denim Harding from Just Ginger. We'll be right back in a few moments. Moments. Hello, Thank you for stopping by. Before we say goodbye, of course, Architects of Madness will be performing a song called TV Dinner. See you next time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.